The Tories, to discuss the privatisation of Channel 4, the civil service plot against Dominic Cummings, and the Home Office brief against Priti Patel. Well, things are certainly kicking off in Westminster, uh, with the new Boris Johnson government uh, coming into power with the agenda of reforming uh, civil service and the other areas of the establishment. And now it's uh, time for the swamp to uh, basically lash out and try, try to take back control of their own establishment. In this video, we are going to be talking about Channel 4, uh, which is uh, publicly nationalized, like the BBC, where there's a slightly different structure, uh, what the uh, Tories are going to be doing potentially with that. And we're also going to be talking about the civil service, uh, basically uh, plotting against Dominic Cummings, uh, the chief ad advisor to Boris Johnson, and finally, uh, what uh, the Home Office civil servants are doing against Priti Patel, the Home Secretary. Let's start with Channel 4 because, interestingly enough, obviously we had uh, during the election uh, and also previously re in recent years, uh, Channel 4 being completely biased and very open about it against not just the Tories but also Brexiteers and ordinary people uh, up and down the country. And uh, now we have, according to the Daily Mail, uh, that Boris Johnson is planning to sell off Channel 4 after boycotting the left-wing broadcaster. This is according to senior Tory MPs. Uh, obviously, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has boycotted the channel since the head of news said that he was a proven liar. Uh, senior MPs have said that uh, Boris has privately confirmed the decision to sell the broadcaster. Um, and We are going to be talking about the reaction to this because all of this started... And not just after the, the Tory leadership, when Channel 4 decided to be completely biased and attack all the candidates, including Sajid Javid, uh, but actually uh, the head of Channel 4 News uh, is a woman who is uh, not really professional or balanced in her approach to broadcasting, uh, jo broadcast journalism. Yeah, recently there was an event, a conference, where the head of the Channel 4 News uh, stood up and uh, opened her mouth without thinking and she said a number of things a number of very well rude offensive things but just inaccurate things abs uh, absolutely in terms of boris johnson and other uh, people in politics uh, let's uh, watch a couple of clips of what she said to remind ourselves who she is boris johnson and jeremy corbyn are cowards she had a word for men like them frit and just this weekend we read that the cowardly cats in the Tory party may stop junior ministers from going on to the Today programme. Yes, it's Mr. Chlorinated Chicken himself. Yeah, she had a great time basically just targeting anybody that she could find on the right. <laughs> and I have no problem with people expressing their opinions. I do it on my YouTube channel and others do it too. Her job is different. She's supposed to be impartial. It is all about this public broadcasting uh, service and the whole concept of you have, to, you have to be impartial. Yet, she went out there, uh, started obviously insulting Boris Johnson, and somehow Donald Trump, for some reason, uh, no one even mentioned him, she just decided to mention him for no reason. And uh, and the fact that obviously Boris has now uh, boycotted the, the Today programme, rightly so. Uh, but she said even more things. It's time for the television industry to stand up for itself and speak out publicly against what is happening. And we should forget the idea that the public can judge for it themselves what is true. <laughs> Meanwhile, the men went on and on, gathering their MBEs and their OBEs and their fresh young wives. Right, putting aside the end, uh, at the end where she was attacking men, half the population for some reason, um, that's obviously very unnecessary. But my biggest problem with this clip is uh, the, the, the section where she was talking about the actual ordinary people out there, the public. And we should forget the idea that the public can judge for it themselves what is true. We should forget the idea that the public could judge for themselves what is true. Wow, That's so much wrong with this statement. Uh, that, that was patronising, insulting the, pu the public. And yeah, this is the head of Channel 4 News. Now you wonder why the Tories are considering uh, these options. And we, <laughs> we have a situation where obviously the, 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 a well-placed Conservative MP has said that Boris has privately confirmed that he will definitely privatise Channel 4. And he said that there is no business for the public to own it anyway. Now we remember during the, uh, the late the recent election when Channel 4 decided to host a very biased uh, debate about climate change. 
And uh, obviously Boris Johnson and uh, Nigel Farage didn't show up and the uh, Channel 4 decided to put two ice sculptures in their place uh, to basically <laughs> it even more publicly show their bias. Yeah, so that's Channel 4 and uh, I hope that this actually happens. Uh, it's, it's, it's slightly different to the BBC. They still um, obviously have the advertising. They can still make their revenue. Why should it be public uh, in terms of the ownership? Uh, so that's what we have with the broadcasters. Now, with, with the actual civil service itself, uh, Dominic Cummings, since he's been uh, in, in his job as the chief advisor to Boris Johnson, he's come up with some ideas to reform the civil, servant, uh, civil service, and now they're uh, hitting back. Yes, yeah, so the civil service is now rewriting HR rules uh, to reign in number 10 and Dominic Cummings. The move follows Cummings' claim that if you can't really take this job, if you're stressed or if you have any issues, uh, you should obviously leave your job because this is a, a difficult job to have. Mark Sedbill, the head of the civil service, has uh, now moved to make a move against Cummings. Uh, this is basically what they're trying to do, is to rewrite uh, the HR rules in Whitehall to ensure that special advisors, uh, but also senior officials, are actually treated with respect and kindness. Uh, the cabinet offices are advertising for a special advisor's HR policy lead uh, to revise and embed a full suite of HR policies. Um, and th this is actually the advert that they have on the government website to see a special advisor's HR policy and uh, 52,000 to 60,000 pounds. Not bad actually. Now I have no issue with making sure that the whole place is more professional and uh, there are procedures, especially when it comes to human resources. That's fine, but this should have been, if there was a problem, if there was a lack of it, this should have been done 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, we know why this is happening now. And yeah, Dominic Cummings, you know, it's, it's difficult to work with, but is the whole point is, he has said, uh, no one is forcing you to work for the government, especially uh, during this term. Uh, this is going to be quite tough and it requires resilience and you have to be self-motivated. Uh, if you don't like it, you could go work somewhere else. And uh, so there are high expectations. And if there are lines that are to be crossed, then obviously, yes, you need you know good HR procedures. But so far, it's just primarily been about him being a tough boss. Uh, so they are trying to reduce his powers. Uh, but he's not the only one who's basically a target because Priti Patel, Home Secretary, uh, who has been quite robust with her views and her policies, uh, especially when it comes to migration, is now also the new target when it comes to civil service. Yes, uh, we have the security and intelligence uh, officials apparently hiding uh, information from Priti Patel because they don't want her to actually have a full control of the department. She is the Home Secretary, for God's sake. And uh, so this is the whole plan because uh, we've had uh, some briefings against um, Priti Patel uh, from Home Office and the, the actual officials uh, saying that she's difficult to work with, uh, she's quite bossy. She... The, what they're trying to do is the, the, the briefings against Priti Patel are becoming quite obvious. Uh, we've had a couple of resignations uh, when Priti Patel became Home Secretary uh, a few months ago and then they said that we resigned because of Priti Patel then it turned out actually in reality they had already uh, sent in their resignation letters a day or two before Priti Patel became Home Secretary it was just a coincidence timing wise and then they used that as an excuse uh, to basically say oh no we're, we are leaving because of Priti Patel she wasn't even there uh, so that these all these lies they are trying to basically destroy her career to make sure that she resigns somehow. And don't be surprised, these people have powers. Um, so these are the same people who, since 2016, they have been trying to sabotage Brexit and frustrate the whole process. Yes, we have latest news about uh, civil certain civil servants uh, who, throughout the whole process of Brexit, tried to sabotage the UK's exit from the European Union. Basically, there were some IT problems. Uh, where it actually affected the actual system and these officials were happy to see the system fail because they hated Brexit so much. This is uh, the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Uh, so DEFRA was obviously one of the areas where they were preparing for Brexit, especially New Deal Brexit, and there's a whistleblower who has said, who used to work in the IT department, who said that a new computer service contract was put in place after the 2017 election. Basically, that failed and no one bothered to do anything about it, even though they were supposed to be preparing for Brexit. Now, as if we don't already have uh, problems from the European Union side themselves, uh, with them um, being childish 
when it comes to the trade talks. And now we have to also deal with the civil service. And the European Union are quite childish right now. Now we have another piece of news from Brussels that are going to be quite frustrating <laughs> for a lot of people. Uh, but uh, fortunately, Boris Johnson has already hit back and he's going to try his best to reverse it. Now, what the European Union have done last minute before we left the EU in January is that they imposed a new law onto us. And because we're uh, during the transition period, we have to go with it for now until we get out. Uh, so there's a new regulation on lawn mowers, golf carts and tractors. Uh, so you are now required to have motor insurance to actually use these. A golf cart, a lawn mower, you, you need to have insurance. Otherwise, uh, legally speaking, you won't be able to use them and the European Court of Justice could actually come and, come and knock on your door and you'll be in trouble. Now, the chief executive of the insurance board has uh, warned that obviously this will hit ordinary people out there. Uh, well, I don't understand why you need insurance to use these sort of things, but this is uh, the new situation and Boris Johnson is going to be hitting back massively because it's completely unfair. And uh, the reason for this, as I said, is because we were still technically a member of the EU when this was uh, passed or basically imposed onto us. And because we are during the transition, um, it, it's, it was throughout the whole pending process, so it just came in. And uh, well, fortunately, the moment that ends, we could cancel this, get rid of it, because we are going to be in control of our own regulations. Golf carts, really. <laughs> I don't understand. So the, on the plus side, even though we are during the transition, they cannot impose any new regulation or directive onto us. But because this was passed before the transition period, before we left the EU, unfortunately, we have to accept it for now. Um, but have, why do you need an insurance to use a golf cart? I, okay, or a lawnmower, for that matter. Um, so this is the European Union and we have the civil service. It's all ridiculous. And uh, everyone's getting sick and tired of all these games. But... This channel is here to obviously raise awareness, spread the spread the word to make sure that we fight back against the establishment, against these idiots. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, if you want to join us, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on that bell next to it so you get notified. We have a daily show at 5.45 p.m. You could also follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. You can find the details on the screen down here. As always, I'm my 2 c I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video.